So good morning, everyone. So today the topic is about the pharmacy retail solution. Uh, most is uh, about the pharmacy one, but it's the retail solution. So uh, maybe we start now. Yeah. So today uh, our agenda will include three main topics. It's about the inventory management and then uh, sales process and some of the report for the pharmacy. So the first one, we will start for the inventory management stock maintenance. Okay. So how we need to maintain our, for the pharmacy stock maintenance. First one, uh, we have to maintain their in-house stock ID with the, to internally track a specific product and business inventory. That means, we have the uh, we have to advise them to use the their own stock ID. Don't use the item, the product barcode as the stock ID. Uh, how can we say don't avoid to use the barcode? Cause the barcode always will change. Cause for some of the item, they they always will change the barcode from the vendor or the supplier there. That's why for for this one as uh, for example for this Panadol. Maybe uh, starting the order is use this uh, barcode, but maybe after one month or two months, the barcode is changed already. Then if let's say change already, at our system is cannot change the stock ID, but system is allowed to change the barcode. That's why uh, we will suggest if can use their own uh, in-house the stock ID. Uh, maybe this one is the example we, Last time suggest the customer lah. but if let's say you got your own experience to maintain another type of the stock ID, so you can advise for them. Lah. And then how we can uh if let's say just now I say uh the barcode always will change. So our system is ready for the multiple barcode assignment. That means if every time they have the new barcode they can maintain at the multiple barcode there. Then uh, system also track it as the same item. If let's say they put at the same stock ID, that means uh, uh, system is allowed more than one barcode idea. For my side, I will suggest if let's say they got the new barcode, the new barcode, if can, we have to maintain the stock maintenance the beside the stock ID that one, then the old barcode you pack, put it at the multiple barcode assignment there. <clears throat> okay, the next one always they will use is the multi UM product. Uh, for example here, this product is the mask, so the stock is come from the vendor is the carton, and then maybe they will packing to it to this uh for the selling and then or by box also will selling. Maybe some of the customer pharmacy they will sell by each. So if can, uh, we have to maintain like this one. But more important is uh, they have to set the base UM maintain is the EA or you want to put a unit also cannot. But EA is for us is as a each. So if for each, that means each is the base item. So why we want to put it, each is the base item, because it will ensure easier for the customer to check in and then easier to do the costing calculation more accurate. Okay, this is the sample we maintained just now, the, this one mask. So the base item, we will put each, each of, and then it will, put the packet, box, and carton. So maybe the stock is come from the supplier is the carton, then we, uh, we ready the stock as the carton. So uh, user also can sell it by packet and box. So this is the short form for the UM ID. So we can set the rate for the UM. That means the pack is uh, uh, multi uh, multiply for the each is 10 each per pack and then 50 each per box like this. 
So under this, the multi um all is the same stock idea. That's been they got the connection relation. And then here, our system, we, after create, you can come to more here. You can see the multi um information. And then if let's say after you create the each the item, the base UOM item, you can throw this uh, create multi UOM stock to multi uh, to create another multi UOM item. So every time you add, you have to make sure you create the stock from the base item. Okay, another one have to maintain the stock grouping. Stock grouping is a system stock maintenance ready field grouping such as the brand, group, category, uh, color, size, user defined group one, two, three. This one actually we do the report filtering purpose as well. And then uh, maybe sometime you can check oh, this one product is under what brand, what group, easier for to, to do the checking as well. So this one just now as mentioned is report filtering purpose. Mark. That's why you can see uh, our report filter parameter there. Always you come got the brand group category. Actually additional uh, filter there. You also can see the another type like the user defined group one, two, three and the color size will be at the additional filter there. So this is the same example we how can advise the customer to put the grouping. So the brand usually we will put it a product brand name or the supplier vendor name also can. And then the group will be the product main group. Category uh, we will suggest is the product sub subgroup. For pharmacy here, always they will group the main group is the poison or the drug item. So this is always they label with the control medicine for the poison. And then this one, the product always for poison is the need to provide the pension prescription. That means the pension need to provide the prescription to, to buy one. And then always uh, the product for under this poison is always have to consult by the doctor or pharmacist one. For the OTC is the over the counter. That means the non-poison medicine or the rehab product. So for the category there, we can uh, put it the sub subgroup for the just now, the main group there. That means the poison is the main group. Then we can sub it for it, uh, for poison is the antibiotics, uh, antihistamines uh, and the warfarin. And the OTC will be the supplement, oral care, health care and cosmetic item. And then the rehab product will be the wheelchair, walking aids, and the fracture aids. So this is the sample at the right hand side here. Means the group like the OTC. And then the rehab product. This is the group. Then the item will be the, the category is the, just now the subgroup. OTC will be supplement. And then OTC or okay. Okay. So if let's say uh, you want to more understand the customer, this one pharmacy one, you can go through the website here to check uh, what is the poison item or non-poison item. And then the prescription medicine, you can check from here. And then the OTC medicine also can check from here, the link. And then the rehab product. Okay, so this is uh, what I try to let you more understand for the how to do the grouping. So just now uh, for the group product, the group, this is the main group OTC over the counter, the red color one. Then inside the main group, you can put it a subgroup like this one, uh, OTC. This is the actually OTC HC then pen is a we can put it as the category ID. Then the name you can put is the pen deliver. So under this category, you can put the product like this. And then the Panadol, 
Panadol, we will put it at the OTC. HC as actually is the healthcare. Lah. And then that means the main, uh, just now the main group is the OTC. Ma. So you can put it sub HC is the healthcare and then pen and fewer product to under this group. And then the like this one, cold, cough and cold, the product will be can subgroup like this. And the anti each product. So this is the sample. If let's say uh, the customer or you don't know how to do the grouping, maybe you can try to understand from here. Okay. So this is just now uh, all we mentioned is for the stock maintenance. Another one next, we will talk about the stock alert level. Stock alert level, usually we have to let the user know we can set the product to prevent the selling or purchase the price over the minimum or maximum value. That means here we can set uh, the minimum price or the maximum price when they do the purchase or selling or from here you can set. But for here, only one alert level is uh, the post system will affect one. It's the price sell minimum value. That means if the product, the staff or the cashier sell lower than this uh, minimum value, they will prompt an alert message to let the cashier or user to know. Others with most is the control at the dynamo. And then the alert for quantity on selling or purchase when doing the related sales or purchase transaction. That means every time like this one, uh, the, the stock, if let's say lower than the the, the setting, they will prompt the message when user self. So here you can see this one item, the unit price is they sell, they put four ringgit 50 cent, but the minimum is the five ringgit. That's why they will prompt the message to alert for the user. But for here, actually, uh, if let's say you want to fully control, cost, if let's say you put the compound, if the user exercise can allow to proceed, then they still can sell. But if let's say you don't want to let the user uh, to, to proceed this one, the user access right for the dynamo then can control it, don't allow to sell. For just now the price selling minimum value also as well. If let's say the cashier not allowed to sell lower than the price, then after system prompt the message, then they need the access right to control uh, who can control to sell it lower the price, we can set it. So all the setting can control one. Okay, why we have this one, uh, you see uh, this one is an example like just, uh, I think this month, uh, the starting for the month, uh, for the anti antigen. So RTK antigen, this one item, the, the government said the hugger board, that means the supply price is the 16 ringgit, but for retail price is 19, 19, 90 cent. So this one, uh, we, we can see the news that actually, if let's say the price is selling over the this price, retail price, it will get the fine for the shop. So that's why uh, we can set it. The price is for the empty profit control and then the price sell minimum actually is prevent sell the price is under expected margin. If let's say you want to understand more the setting, actually uh, I think last few months uh, we, we got the webinar for the stock alert level one. So you can click this link to check the slide how to do the setting for this stock alert level. Okay. So this is the example. If let's say the customer invoice uh, when sell the things is lower than the selling price, so they will prompt the message. So when they sell, they will prompt the message. The price is lower than the maximum price. Okay. The next one, uh, this one is some price 
markup option and the profit margin percent. This one also is to avoid the price over bring negative image to the company against the company or government price for profit the uh, control. Like this one, the mask. I think last year the mask you can see. Uh, if you sell the price is one ringgit, actually is a uh, sell expensive already. Cost government could control the price. So if let's say uh no control, they will bring the back uh the negative image. Like this one, you can see uh the news like this already. Okay. So uh at our stock maintenance day, actually can do the calculation price and the profit margin percent. So here, if you go through the stock maintenance day, you can see now our setting for the price day, we can do the markup option based on the reference cost or the system cost or none. If let's say you want to mark up based on the reference cost, then you can set so like this one, uh, reference cost is 16 ringgit 50 cent. So I want to mark up 20%. So you, you can check the price will be 19 ringgit 80 cent. And then you can see the margin, the profit margin from here. If let's say you sell this price, how uh, many the margin you get. Okay, so here you got the calculation, how to do. Okay, so here you can see actually the price markup is the price, the selling price minus the cost, then divide the cost to and try 100%. That's why you can we can get the 20% uh, for the margin uh, for the markup. And then the margin is the revenue. Revenue is the also selling price, then you minus the cost, and then you divide the revenue, you will can get the margin as well. So this is the how system calculate the markup price, markup percent, and the margin percent. So actually, uh, for the stock price one to top stock uh, price one to find the profit margin percent, all system will auto calculate based on the price markup uh, either by the reference cost or system cost. Not calculate. If the price markup option is set to none, if let's say just now here the price markup option is set to none, then system will not calculate any price. Uh, the markup option for the price. If let's say the stock price mar profit margin would be auto compute if the price being changed. So if let's say you change the price from here after that, maybe you put uh nineteen eighty cent system or you count. Maybe you want to change the price to to be twenty ringgit. So system will auto calculate uh, this one, the margin percent is how much after you change the price. Okay. So if you want to know and more understand the setting for the markup and the margin, you can click below the link. Then uh, you can check with uh, the site will show you how to do the setting. Okay. Another one is the stock reorder. Stock reorder, also known as a stock refinisher. Setting actually easier to observe the minimum stock quantity level when doing the replenish stock. It also able to set the maximum stock quantity level, then wouldn't cost the stock over purchase. And then uh, it also can set the reorder level to assist fill up the top up value based on current stock balance quantity or set reorder default value to top up the stock level based on this value. Okay, so under the stock maintenance here, you can see this side, just the bottom here, the stock reorder here. Oops. <coughs> Usually we check if let's say you don't touch the this setting actually. Uh, we have we, we just uh, maybe mention more on this one balance quantity um only but actually here we can we can get the setting like the minimum quantity for the stock and then maximum quantity for the stock and then the reorder level how many want to reorder and then also can set the reorder default value as well and then we can set this item normal level is how many 
So all things I think we can through this link, the site here, you can get the web, uh, the PowerPoint, like, cause this one actually also same as just now the stock alert price level, same webinar that day we got a briefing already. So you want to understand more, you can try to click the link to get the, the PowerPoint to understand more. If you, let's say, got any question, maybe you can ask that to us, then we can try to uh, let you more understand for yeah, how to do the setting easier for you to uh, to to check uh, to check uh, to check or set for your customer as well. Okay, so this is the purchase order. We got the stock reorder function. Actually, here we got the purchase order. There, you click more here, you can see the fast reorder. So we have a column to advise the order quantity. You can see if let's say you, uh, after you insert a new PO, then you click the fast reorder. Here actually we'll get the item you want to order. Then you can get the minimum quantity or maximum quantity for this item. Then you can see the reorder level. And then system will advise you uh, how many you want to or you can order for it. You will not over the maximum quantity. And then we also got a report called it the stock reorder listing. This one is under the inventory module, report stock reorder listing. So here you can see if let's say the, the report here actually after you preview, the report actually the upside there you can see uh, another filtering to let you to check if let's say you want to set the quantity less than the minimum level you, you after you choose the yes and then you click submit system will show you the balance item uh, lower than the minimum level. Okay, another one is the, we also got a stock take device. Cause a stock take actually is the stock count to ensure the accuracy physical stock record daily with the system stock balance quantity. At the market there, we actually, we can see many types of portable stock count device to improve the stock count processor. For our site, maybe, this one left hand side, the cost of maybe we last time already see it many times already. Lah. This is the normal our last time using for the stock stock pick one. But now since uh, the trend is all you use the apps already. So we also got the new app to let your customer easier to do stock pick as well. So this is the new app, we call it the Spay app. If let's say you've got interest, maybe you can download the apps from this link. So after you download the link, you can see the dashboard like this. And then you can click just now the stock take there. You can scan your item to do the stock take. Okay, how you we do the stock take with this one uh, powerful portable device apps call it the space apps. So uh, this one, after you use the portable device to do the stock call, actually once you've done the stock call at the device there, it will direct upload the report to the Dynamo. So this is the device, what you, you now you do. Uh, okay, so, okay, so if let's say, this one, you click the apps here, then you can go through the, you create a new stock take, then you scan your item. Okay. After you scan, you can key in how many quantity as well. Okay. Once you set this, okay. Once we set it, it will direct upload to the Dynamo stock take page here, then 
Actually, just now here, you can see the order ID here. Actually, the order ID, we will put it at the remark here. Then you can, uh, as a reference for, for the DUI stock there. So this, you can check it like this. And then uh, another one we, for the pharmacy, maybe we will check the expire or near expired item. So how we can check it, we can use the stock aging report or inquiry report to check it. Because this one is the an inventory report that provide key metrics with, uh, about the status of your inventory and how long each item of inventory typically spent in the storage before being sold or expired. So actually, as just now mentioned, is you can do this one estimate tracking the expiry product. Because some of the pharmacy product could be returned to the supplier within the web uh, before the period one month expired. Okay. And then, so we can do this one every month to practice to check the stock aging to avoid the product expired after 11 months of the shop opening. That means you can check it if let's say you are the new shop. So after 11 months, you can start to use this one uh, stock aging report to check it. Uh, if let's say the sum of the product is a uh, one one year uh, uh, the expiry date for maintain for the one year you can check it off you can use this one to check it based on the last two column to check the product is it uh is it coming soon to expire for here actually if let's say the balance stock at the behind one that means the stock it keep more than for this one you uh, for this record, actually the stock for highlight here is the stock balance for 10 or 3, 1, 2, this one is over 331 days already. That means uh, this one you keep very long time already. That means you can try to check out this item uh, where you put, then you can check, is it the item? You can check back the box there. Is, is it uh, this item is coming as by soon. And then here we also, just now, uh, not the report, we also got an inquiry screen to estimate the stock as well. For here, maybe you can advise the customer, if let's say customer always say want to export to Excel. Here you can use this screen to export to Excel so customer can check it. At here, actually you can check it uh, as like the date balance, how many, and then here also by the column, 30 days, 31 days or 60 days, all the column will be shown here. But for here also, we'll calculate the value as well, not the stock balance. They will calculate the value as well. Then you can check it. This one uh, in for that month, this month, in how many quantity, up how many quantity, and then the balance, how many quantity. So here we, we can check by on this inquiry screen as well. Another one is the barcode label. For my site, got a customer always got asked, hey, is it our system can print up the label for them to put it the display right there? So we can set the format, follow their size dimension. So we can set it the size, like this one actually is a 3.5 cm times 4 cm. So we can set it to the F4 size format because they want to set cost. So they want to print it at the F4 paper, then to cut it up, to put it at this period. If let's say the customer got the budget, actually, you uh, we can advise them to do, to put the cardboard la. cost actually like this one assemble they can print up to the cardboard there then they no need to cut they just can uh, pick it up like the barcode label so they will save the more uh, 
the person to do to cut it because you cut it the air four size like this one you will eat time to waste the time to cut up so this one we also can set it but depends your customer the budget la. if let's say they say they something they want to cut costs don't want to use so many cost i think the pharmacy they the compulsory got the printer a4 printer there at the, for the for them now so maybe you can do the format like this to let them to easier to put it to the display rack because they can put the price uh, before before the discount for the member the normal price is how much and then the member price is how much we can set it price one is the retail price maybe the price two or price three is the member price so we can set at the format here then we will attract the customer to buy it. So the next one, we will cover more on the sales process. So the sales process to, we can show it to the customer how, how to maintain their member and then how to let them the system for for them for the sales process them more smooth a bit so the member module is our loyalty program it's the one of the partner we call in cut then this is the one of the integration for the membership so what is the in cut in cut actually is the let the customer or user can collect the point and the point redemption so this one is the real time one uh. Once they purchase at your shop, then directly can see their award, how many, and then is it possible for them to redeem the point for as a payment or what the, the, they can redeem the item as well. And then another one is a prepaid. Prepaid is the top up credit. Lah. So they can, the member can manage the app there to top up the money inside the app as the e-wallet like that then they can use uh, e the money inside the wallet there to buy and do the purchase at the shop there and then also got the digital e-stamp so last time we have to do the stamping at the card there but for now you, we can do at the apps there so that's why we call digital e-stamp is the virtual one and then uh e-voucher so at the app there also can uh, the member also can check the voucher uh, what they get the voucher and then expire that so they no need to keep so many card or the voucher inside put inside their wallet there so all it will be at the inside the apps already application so if you want to know more the in card module maybe you can click the link to to check it Okay, we for the this one for how come uh, we say this one integration is uh, better because we got a uh, let them to easier to do the member registration. So we got a device. If let's say the member can provide the IC, then just plug in at the device here. System view, you just click in the my card this button. Directly, we fill in all the information, same as the screen here. And then you can, you just need to let the cashier to know after they scan to key in the customer, the mobile number or the email. So the email will be depends, huh? but the mobile number is a compulsory one huh? since it's the yellow color. The in card number, you just put it empty because they will automatic provide the card number after you read successful to read the, this one in card. For email, if let's say they put MD, uh, in card they will provide one uh, email for the user as well. But the, that one, uh, you can, if let's say the user want to log in the app, maybe will a bit difficult. Uh. That's why actually, uh, we will suggest uh, when to do the registration, 
actually mobile number and email do fill in together because for the apps you also have to log in by their email as well if let's say they can because they will receive the email and then uh, the screen here is a user friendly we got the multiple way to search the member record we can search from search by here we can search by the card number or the member register ic id or mobile number or email and then by the member register name and then the poll system also can if let's say uh, the merchant or the cast user they got to the renewal plan one so actually here we can directly to do the renewal as well and then can assist the member to check the point and the credit balance and then also can directly to do the point redemption by payment type or we can redeem by the product as well another one is the get the last transaction in card number this one the box one can directly retrieve the last transaction that member number to check if let's say uh, they do the renewal first so after they do the renewal then they want to check the purchase history for their next purchase then they can check back the history then uh, what they buy and then what item they want then they can click and then to help the member to check the history record this is the screen if let's say want to check the balance to do the renewal the screen will be like this and then here actually we if let's say the member got the spam we also can check for user the how many spam they got okay this is the our in card app you can try to download uh, at the app store for apple user or android is a play store huawei also got lah. maybe you can check the huawei app there and then uh, we can check the spam like just now mentioned the voucher even you want to uh, do the mgm member get member the referral program also can throw the app to to do so just key in the referral number here only and then you can add it then you can check the referee who is your referee and then you can do the sharing as well to do the share the mem the link to let your maybe your friend to register then they can directly to link to under your account so this is the apps can do lah. and then the next one we got the member purchase history to retrieve the member purchase history record this one is the we are the post system so if let's say uh, you want to directly to show this one member purchase history actually we got a shortcut key you click the control q control plus q then uh, you will system will prompt up this one member purchase history then if let's say just now you got a uh, scan the customer or member card number here here will show uh, this customer the all the product purchase history or if let's say just now the order screen there you got scan some of the item you can check the scan item only so here the purpose for this one purchase history is where the member purchase that's mean uh if let's say the merchant got few outlet so use this uh member uh the cashier can assist to the member to check eh, last time where you purchase and then when they purchase so can check back eh, this one under the document date here they can check eh, this one last time or last year you got purchase this one so your system can retrieve and then what they purchase we can get it the product what they purchase actually here we got a filter row here you can filter if let's say uh 
they know what you let's say you know the sum of the name here you can filter from here if let's say uh this listing too long uh hard to check it you also can group it you drag it the header to here then you group it together and then the price how much they buy and then how many they buy before with all the system can retrieve so this is the member purchase history not even the support system can check dynamo also can check you can go through the mem the stock sales history by customer there it's under the customer module and query screen there you can check the by the customer or by the stock if let's say the parameter here you put the customer name or id here will show all the member full full listing purchase listing or if let's say you scan the stock here will check this product purchased by who before and then uh not even uh either one both also can check you can check out uh, this member with one of the product how uh when they purchase also can do the filtering so this one is uh, actually we can check the member favorite item where they but uh, what they purchased before okay another one is the reprint receipt screen function if let's say the member they come to the shop before then they say they want to purchase same item so cashier also can retrieve by their the customer id or customer name then search the history record after they search then they you can just uh, throw the preview to check the listing there if let's say confirm what they want to buy follow the same receipt before we can click the duplicate so system will duplicate same order what they purchased before so no need to scan but have to make sure all the stock is it got stock or not if let's say no stock they have to do the delete the item and then if let's say the member want to buy more than one then have to change the quantity as well so this is the duplicate function at the receipt screen there and then we can print up the medicine label because some of the pharmacy they will print up like this one the poison or control medicine to let to stick on the like this one the sample stick on the medicine there then they have to let the member know uh, this one you you have to take one template and then three times per daily and then when when necessary after the food this kind of information cause uh based on the link here some of the this one the label actually we cannot easier to write it by handwriting so have to print it out at the label so this one have to set up if let's say uh we can set the risk cost this one is the repeat reprint receipt there so actually here we put the format is the receipt format but for here maybe you can set the format is the barcode label format maybe the bigger size a bit then you can set it because before you print it you can select what printer you want to use to print then you can use uh check it for the barcode printer there then maybe the format here you have to set the condition cause uh the receipt maybe we will mix up with the some other item not all the item need to print so you can set maybe the medicine category item or medicine group item or the poison group item then you can set the condition under the format there then can print up by the item what you want to print up <clears throat> okay another one is 
uh, maybe cost some of the pharmacy they will provide. If let's say you purchase the medicine, so the medicine they will pack under the bag like this one, the right hand side one. So every time uh, cost for my experience is every time I want to purchase back, maybe the uh, if maybe can throw the just now the member history to get what I purchased before, what can ask the cashier there. But if let's say you got put this kind of the label at the this one medicine back here, so you can print up stick on the side. So even uh the the cashier not maybe uh cannot search the record for you. Maybe you can bring it this one, the plastic bag, the medicine bag with the sticker, then the cashier can scan it or to let you know uh, what they, what uh, you purchased before. So here also at the receipt format here, we can set the barcode label, then you can print up for the label like this one. So here it depends if let's say you want to print at the, our poll system also got a reprint to print the barcode label that side also can to do this. But if let's say for here, why I put here is uh, maybe when they print the receipt, cause the receipt here already show uh, what they purchased. So here you no need to set what item to print cost based on the barcode label that you have to select back the item. For here, maybe you no need, you just, maybe you set the condition at the report, for, uh, report format there, maybe for the medicine item, some of the item, then you do the condition setting there. So it will print the selected item to print up on it. So this is the setting. You can advise for the customer if let's say they want to this kind of print up. If let's say you want to put the price as well, maybe the format you can add on the price at here. So this is the sample to do the barcode label. Okay, the next one, uh, we will be the promotion. So cost now a day, I think pharmacy will quite more to do the promotion to attract the customer since uh, I think if let's say nearby your house area, I think got few shop of the pharmacy already. So maybe some of the pharmacy, they want to attract more customer come. So maybe they got, they have to do the promotion plan for the customer. Okay, so this is the example for the, uh, how to say, for the, and the, the pharmacy to do the promotion. This is the promotion stock. So here we can set the parameter, how many they want to uh, do the prom promotion. Is it for member or non-member also can set. And then they want to set the promotion by weekday only or weekend or whole day, maybe, uh, maybe after night hour, or the month, uh, weekday, the daytime. So you can, we can set this kind of prom, uh, the promotion. Okay. And then the rebate, you can see this one instant rebate. So our system also can do the cash rebate function as well. And then like this one, we can set the PWP purchase with purchase. So our system also can set already. And then, this one is rent discount. Cost you see one purchase one is how many? Purchase 10 kit, how many? Purchase 100, how many? So this one is the rent discount print. So our system also ready can do this kind of promotion ID. So if let's say you want to know more detail the setting, you can click the link here. You can check back, uh, I think last, I think this one promotion is last week or last two weeks or last section, uh, we got to the this kind of promotion webinar already. So maybe you can click to get it the link 
or you can try to check on our YouTube channel there to check the webinar before. <clears throat> and then online store module also can assist the pharmacy as well. So our system is ready, the marketplace integration directly linked to the Shopee account or Lazada account. And then our site also can do the e-commerce integration cost, not even the marketplace. We also can do the user or merchant own website to sell the product. So our system also is ready early to do it. Then we also got the shop to go. Shop to go is the O2O for online to offline or offline to online. That means they control the online to purchase and then collect it at the post system there. And then or they can do it at the post system to purchase then what the customer or member purchase, then they want to get maybe they get the point ID. So maybe they want to uh, redeem the point at the online store, they also can do it. So this is the reference link. If let's say I uh, want to check it about how to do the setting for the Shopee integration or Lazada integration, site there integration and shop to go integration, all we do this actually all did it before idea. That's why here you can click the link to check more detail or further setting how to do. And then this is uh, our customer doing at the Shopee there. So this is the one of the, our customer Kampa medical supplier. This one, they sell it at the Shopee store. So you can check the link here to check in how they do it. And then another one is the essential shop. This one is also our one of the customer. So this is the what they did, what they're doing on uh current currently the market uh doing. Okay, we also can do the subsidiary module franchise. So the company structure between the parent and subsidiary company. So here maybe uh they are the one of the group so they can do it the parent company supply the stock to the subsidiary company so how we did it at our system we can set the parent company database and then we can do the relation between the parent and subsidiary company and then how, what we, what we need to do the at the dynamic database and then what we need to set up under this database all will be set from here already if one to here we all, i also got a link this one i think also this year we i i we also uh, did at the webinar before so maybe you can try to check back so this is the structure the for how to do so the parent company under the left hand side the subsidiary is under the right hand side so the subsidiary company can uh, issue the PO to the, the parent company and then they can actually the parent company that can import from the system what from the subsidiary company there and then this is the way to get the DO customer invoice will be linked together like this flow. So maybe the red color one you can try if let's say the purchase order can issue ID, then the parent company can throw the sales order to import the subsidiary PO and then they can throw the sales order there to import to the DO there and then DO after they issue the DO then the subsidiary company can receive at the good receipt note there, then they can import from the parent company DO, and then they can issue the invoice at the supplier there. So this is the in the linking, they can less to do many things under their business operation there. 
Okay, so the next one we will cover more on the report, what the pharmacy will try to review. So first one is the government compliance, e-poison book into second, the third, the e-tracking of poison control item, and then the last one is the anti-profitability control. Okay, the first one, so maybe some of the outlet they got to the stock transfer. So at the stock transit there, maybe we you can do the add one more copy at the format there is the poison side order. This one is the document to let the pharmacist to do acknowledgement. That means uh that's you can see it. This one the you can see the purpose for the remark here is the purpose of which is required for resale or dispensing and then here we can see the pharmacy who approved it who's who signed in this one product the the transit order okay so this one actually is you can add one more copy at the report format there and then another one is the customer invoice also can add one more copy at the behind there then you can see the poison side order as well so this one also for the pharmacist to do the acknowledgement okay another one is the e-poison book actually is to record the poison control item this one is under the inventory module report and the stock listing there but this one the stock grouping if let's say uh, this one is for the poison control item that means when you do the grouping for, have to assign the item correctly if not you report uh, do the filtering report maybe not the report what you want uh. so this uh, grouping stock grouping they have uh, is the more important have to set up uh. if let's say you set wrong then maybe you get wrong report uh. So for here, actually, uh, you can see I got one column called it the Drug Control Authority DCA registration number. Lah. So this one actually, uh, I try to set it at the column of the stock article data cost. I think the pharmacy didn't use the article. So maybe we can set it at the one of the column there for this to record this kind of the number the registration number so for here actually what they need they need to uh, know the balance stock and the cost and the price as well and then the another one is the e-tracking of poison control item this one have to record information include the transaction document number and the customer identity so here you based on this report actually uh, get from the stock sales analysis detail there but original format maybe don't have the customer name and the contact number you just drag it the amend the format and put it the customer name and then the contact number so you can uh, set the format like this one so this one have to send as just now the stock grouping have to assign correctly for every item if not maybe the item you set wrong grouping then you cannot to get the correctly report another one is the just now anti profitability control this is the stock price analysis this one is to let the monitor the control price item to avoid the over profitability. Then through the regular monitor by the MD, cost the government got the, this kind of the department to check is it the uh, the shop shopper is it got sell it expensive over uh that's mean over prof, over selling uh, the price. So we can throw it to monitor the price based on this report but original format actually is 
don't have the minimum price and maximum price, maybe you can try to amend the format to pull it with the minimum price and the maximum price as well. Then when they do the, the, uh, the user, when check the report on here, they can see uh, the cost, how much, then the selling price and the margin as well. Then they can check oh, this one, uh, system setting already, the minimum price is 17 ringgit. Then the maximum, the higher price is 19, 90 cent. So we can throw it, the report, is it the price is correct selling or the margin is over or less, you can check on here. So this is the our today pharmacy retail solution topic, but have to take note, please confirm with the customer before performing any implementation for the pharmacy. Because different customers have different requirements. All this presentation topic are based on the different customer sharing and experience what we implement before. So have to take note for this one. Okay, okay. thanks. Okay. So there's an attendee asking for, for the touch force label for medicine, if in same receipt, I have three items need to print the label, may I know how to define the label format? For some item is one day two times or one day three times. So I think they men just now mentioned for this part uh, mm. take one template three times daily. That one is I set it on the stop note there. Okay, I put it on this one stop note here. Then the post system the format there. You have to set it up. So like this one. So you put it the stock not here. This is the stock note, then they will print up. So they will print up like this one. So if let's say you got set the setting there. But if let's say different requirement cost, maybe some of the person not take one template, two template, that one maybe have to try how to amend. Maybe they eat two times per daily. So maybe here have to change. Yeah, so it can be done with the sales notes. Hmm. Maybe you can put it, maybe some that this one medicine got few uh take I think how to take it uh, maybe yeah, got few time yes, to yes. that do, maybe yeah. they can because this one is prescribed one right this yeah yeah is prescribed by pharmacist or by doctor so they will based on your condition to let you know you can take how many tables per day and how to take it some some uh, medicine have to take before food one usually like for the stomach. The stomach gastric one, they have they advise you to take before food. Some is after food. Then some is uh, uh, four times a day, then how many hours per interval. So this based on condition, which is can set. No? So, and then one more is just now mentioned, uh, not all the medicine have to print up and not all the purchase, customer purchase item have to set up maybe you can set the filter here for what kind of the category or grouping then they will print up for that category item only la. if there is no more questions to ask then we we can end today's section <laughs> I, yeah. okay Thank so you. see you guys on next two weeks bye, bye.